I'm a big fan of Angular and Dart. That's why I got really excited when Angular Dart got announced. I've been playing with this framework for a couple of weeks, and I put together a sample application in the process. In this screencast, I will show how this application works and how I used Angular Dart to build it. All right, there are a few things you can do in this application. First, you can create a call, and then you can add a bunch of items that you want to discuss during the call. Now the call has been created, and we are back on the main screen. I'd like to point out that the URL reflects the selected call. One thing to note is that everything is being stored in the local storage. So if I change anything about the call and refresh the page, the changes will be preserved. Finally, I can make a fake call to my cat. That's pretty much it. Now let's look at the source code. First, let's open pubspec.yaml. And what you can see here is that I have Angular in my dependencies. This is the HTML file that was open in the browser. Over here, I'm requiring the application. And this is an NGView directive. This directive loads the template associated with the current route. We are going to look at the route configuration in just a second. This is our application. As you can see, I require some libraries and declare some parts. Let's take a closer look at the Talk to Me app module. An Angular application uses dependency injection to instantiate components and pass them to each other. In Angular Dart, your dependency injection configuration is bundled into modules. So you use modules to register components in the DI framework. The simplest way to register a component is by using the type method. For instance, here I'm registering the call serializer service. This service is pretty straightforward. It serializes and deserializes calls. It also doesn't depend on any other injectable, so it's self-contained. There is, however, a service that depends on call serializer, call storage. What's interesting here is that call storage doesn't create an instance of call serializer or any other dependency. Instead, it declares the types of the objects it needs. That's enough information for the Angular framework to find the right objects and inject them. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated scenario. I'd like to pass a custom implementation of a particular interface. In Angular Dart, I can do that by using implemented by. For instance, talk to me route initializer that I'm registering here will be passed in into every component that requires a route initializer. When you register a component using the type method, Angular will create an instance of that component for you. Sometimes you want more flexibility. You want to be able to create an instance yourself. And the factory method gives you exactly that. The last thing I want to show you in this file is how to bootstrap your application. You do that by passing a module into ng-bootstrap. By default, the whole page will become an application. If you want to scope your application to a particular part of the page, you can do that by passing a selector or an element. Moving forward, let's look at how we organize routes. The first route here is the create route. It's very simple. The only thing it does is renders a template. Let's quickly look at the template. It's pretty straightforward. Just a bunch of input elements and a button. All right, let's look at the next route. This route is the default one, uh, which means that it will be used when nothing matches the URL. If you open the template, we can see that the template is pretty basic. The only interesting thing here is this nested ng view. That's actually pretty cool. Angular Dart supports nested routes. Right now we are looking at the template for the least route. 
So if this route has an active child route, its template will be rendered right here. Going back to our route initializer, we see that we have such a route, the show route. This route is active when a call is selected. I'd like to draw your attention to the call ID parameter. I can specify it in my path like this with a colon and then access it on my controllers and services. All right, let's jump into the template. The first thing I will show you here is how to assign a controller to this template. Here I'm defining the controller, which is a special kind of a directive in Angular. You can use the selector property to tell Angular where to apply this controller. In this case, it is this div element. Let's go back. The other property I'm setting here is publish as. This property is the name I can use to refer to this controller in the template. Let's look at the controller one more time to see how it's implemented. Well, first of all, I'm getting the ID of the call using route provider. Then, using storage, I'm fetching an instance of the call class from the local storage. And finally, I'm setting up a listener in order to save the call every time it changes. Let's go back to our template and take a look at another building block of Angular, components. This page consists of two custom Angular components, call and agenda. So this is the call component and this is agenda. Let's look at how the agenda component is implemented. Angular components are very similar to web components. They have their own templates and style sheets. Also, Angular uses Shadow DOM to render them. As with controllers, you need to define a selector so Angular knows when to instantiate your component. That's what I'm doing here. Next, I'm configuring the template URL property. Angular will use this template to render the component. As before, publish as is a way to refer to this component inside its template. Finally, apply author styles breaks the CSS encapsulation of this component. It is probably a good idea to have this property set to false so your component is self-contained. I set it to true because it doesn't play nicely with the bootstrap that I'm using to style this application. If you work with AngularJS, you know that DOM attributes can be mapped to scope variables using the following syntax. Here the equal sign configures a two-way data binding. In Angular Dart, you would use annotations like this. I personally find it much more readable and less confusing. Let's jump into the agenda template. One thing you can see here is how I reference the component in the template. Another thing is that most of the directives that you know from AngularJS are also present in Angular Dart. Let's recap. We looked at the HTML file that was open in the browser. We also took a quick look at the main application file. So we know how we can create a module, register all components and bootstrap an application. Next, we saw a few services, self-contained and not. Then we examined the route initializer to see how we can use parameters, set the default route, nest routes, etc. After that, we took a quick look at the controller and finally, we saw how we can define an Angular component. I hope that was enough information for you to get started with the framework. Check out the sample application repo, you may find it useful. I also found this wiki that Angular team put together very useful, so check it out. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.